Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to set up Octoprint on your Raspberry Pi so you can control your 3D printer over your network. I'm going to be using Wi-Fi here, but this will also work with Ethernet. In this tutorial, I'm going to be using a Windows machine to flash Octoprint to my SD card, but this will work with Linux, Mac, or Windows. So first thing you're going to need, obviously, is a Raspberry Pi. This is a Pi 2. I recommend using the 3 because it has built-in Wi-Fi, but if you have a Pi 1, 2, 3, or even a 0, they will work. Since I'm using the 2, I have a Wi-Fi adapter here, an 8 gigabyte micro SD card. You can get away with a smaller card like a 2 gigabyte, but I had a free 8 gigabyte card, so that's what I'm going to be using. A USB cable to connect your printer to your Raspberry Pi, a power adapter for the Pi itself, an SD card reader if you don't have one built into your PC, and finally, you can use a camera if you'd like to. Now this is the main reason I want it. I can monitor my prints over my Wi-Fi network from my Android phone or my iPhone. This is a Raspberry Pi camera, but this will work with a Logitech C230 or just a regular USB webcam. Let's move over to the PC now. We're going to download Octoprint, flash it to our SD card, and then we're going to set it up. I'll walk you through every step. You'll be set up with Octoprint on your Raspberry Pi in no time. All right, guys, let's get started here. First up, let's insert our SD card into our computer. This is going to work with a Mac, a Windows, or a Linux machine, so don't worry about that. I have an 8 gigabyte SD card already inserted. So you don't have to worry about formatting it, but if you'd like to, you can go ahead and format it FAT32 to begin with. The application we're going to be burning the image with will automatically format it for us. Let's open up a browser. And we're going to head over to octoprint.org. We're going to download Octoprint. We're going to click on the download link and download Octopi 0.13. It's about 500 megabytes, so just give it a little bit of time to download. While this is downloading, let's go ahead and get Etcher. What this application is going to allow us to do is flash the image to our SD card. And like I said at the beginning of the video, this will work with Windows, Mac, or Linux. So go ahead and get your preferred distribution here. I want to download the Windows 64-bit installer. Next thing we want is Notepad++ because we need to edit the network config file on the SD card when we're done flashing it. I recommend using Notepad++ if you're on Windows. Do not try to edit it with the built-in Windows Notepad. Usually messes everything up. Download. All of this is super safe software. It has been scanned with malware bytes and there is no malware or viruses at all. You can download the 32-bit installer here. Next application, PuTTY. Now this application is mainly for Windows because Mac and Linux already have SSH built into the terminal. Let's go ahead and download PuTTY. And if you download the EXE, you don't have to install anything. You can just click on it and it will launch PuTTY for us. And finally, if you have an Android or iOS device, go ahead and download Thing. This is going to be the easiest way to find the IP address of the Raspberry Pi after we flash it. You can always go into your router by going to the top of your bar, type in your router's IP, and find the Raspberry Pi on your network. But Thing works from your phone. It will scan your network and show you exactly what the IP address is of your Raspberry Pi. So I've downloaded everything and I've put everything on my desktop. Here we have Octopi Jesse Lite 0.13.0. I've extracted it with WinRAR and it's in a folder right here. This is a disk image file. It's 1.7 gigabytes after it's extracted. Let's open up Etcher and flash that image. So from here we're just going to select the Octopi image. Mine's on my desktop. Octopi Jesse Lite, disk image file. Select drive, 
Now this should automatically select your SD card, but double check it and make sure this is your SD card. Mine is drive D. And we're gonna click flash. This is just going to burn the image to the SD card and then verify the file system. All right, so the flash was complete. Now we need to set up our Wi-Fi network on the SD card. Sometimes you might get lucky and the SD card will show back up right here, but it looks like I'm going to have to eject and put my SD card back in just one time so it'll show back up. And there we have it. We're going to open it up. And what we want to find is octopinetwork.txt. We're going to right click and open with Notepad++. From here, I definitely recommend reading through it. It tells you everything you really need to know. I'm using a WPA network. If you're using a WEP network, you're going to have to fill in this information here. If you're using an unsecured, you'll have to fill in the information here. So what I want to do is put my network here. I want to put my password here. And we want to uncomment these three lines. By uncommenting, I mean delete the hashtag at the beginning. We're going to click Save, File, Save. And that's it. We can now place the SD card in our Pi and boot it up. So if you're using a WEP, you'll need to uncomment these after you fill in this information here. If you're using unsecured, you'll have to uncomment these three lines. So what I'm going to do now is just fill in my correct information, and we'll move back over to the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so now that we have the SD card flashed, we're just going to place it into our Raspberry Pi. I'm also going to connect my Wi-Fi adapter. Now, if you're using a Pi 3, you won't need an adapter. So a little earlier, I printed up a Raspberry Pi case with a little camera holder because I am using the Raspberry Pi camera. Very simple here. What I did was I attached a little L bracket. The printer I'm using is a TiVo Black Widow and it has open build rails. So these little grub nuts on the back will connect right to the side of my open rails. Just go ahead and just slide the Pi right in there. Very nice. And as you can see, this little tiny, so it'll move in every direction we want it to. We go ahead and connect my ribbon cable to my CSI port. So this is pretty nifty to be able to use this, but if you have a webcam, it will work over USB. I just had this laying around. This is a five megapixel first generation Raspberry Pi camera. So I figured I'd use it. So what I'm gonna be doing is just mounting my Pi here. And I'm gonna mount my camera right here. So it's pointing directly at my bed and I'll probably go up a little higher. Now you'll have to figure out how you want to mount your Raspberry Pi. You want it just to you know, sit next to the printer or whatever you want to do with it. But I figured this way would be easier for me. So as you can see, I have the Raspberry Pi and the camera mounted. It's pointing directly at my bed. And one thing I'm going to do later on is put another L bracket just so I can secure this at the top also. But for now, it looks pretty good and it'll work fine. We need to go ahead and plug in our Raspberry Pi's power cable. And I'm also going to plug in the USB cable that's going to be connected to my printer. So after everything is connected, go ahead and turn your printer on, then we're going to move back to the PC. All right, guys, so now that we have our 3D printer running and our Raspberry Pi connected to it, let's go ahead and get our Raspberry Pi's IP address. Now, the easiest way to do this 
is to download Thing on your mobile phone. I have an iOS device. I'll leave links in the description for you. This is a very easy network scanner. It's also available for Android. So all you need to do is make sure your mobile device with this app installed is connected to the same network you set up in the Raspberry Pi's config text. Scan your network and find the device that says Octopi. Grab your IP address because we're going to need it. Next, we need to open up Putty. What we're about to do is change the default password of the Raspberry Pi. By default, the password is Raspberry and the user is Pi. So we definitely want to change this because anybody on your network can access your 3D printer this way. Go ahead and type in the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. Make sure SSH is checked and click open. So you may get a warning here. We just need to access the Raspberry Pi. Click yes. We're going to log in as Pi, P-I, and our password is Raspberry. From here, we want to type P-A-S-S-W-D. Press enter. We're going to enter the default password, which is Raspberry. We're going to create a new password. Press enter, and we're going to verify our new password. So we've successfully changed the default password on the Raspberry Pi. Now we need to expand the Raspberry Pi's SD card, and we can do that by typing sudo raspi config. Press enter. The very first option here, expand file system. Click enter. It's going to expand our file system for us. We'll go to finish, and we'll need to reboot the Raspberry Pi one time. Now that we've rebooted, we can go ahead and close Putty down. Wait a little while for it to reboot. We're going to open up a browser. Any browser should work. I use Chrome here. And at the very top, we're going to type in our IP address of the Raspberry Pi. Octoprint server online, reloading page. Give it a little bit of time to initialize. We're connected to the Raspberry Pi through our browser. If you want to configure access control, go ahead and do that. Unless you're not worried about people connecting to your network but I'm just going to enter quick password, username, and click keep access control enabled. Now I'm going to log in, connect to my printer, detecting baud rate, and we're now connected to our 3D printer. So there are tons of features in here, way more than I can go over in this video, but if you read through the Octoprint documentation, you'll be able to find what you need. One of the cool things about this is we can upload a G code directly to the SD card on the Raspberry Pi and print from there. So I'm gonna click Upload, Desktop, and I already have a cute octopus right here, G code. I configured this in Cura. There we are. We can start printing this right now, but let's go over a couple other little features built in here. As you can tell by this screen here, this is our temperature screen. It'll show our extruder temperature and our bed temperature. Control. My camera's set up, but it's sideways. I'm gonna go to settings, webcam. And I'm just gonna flip this guy all the way around. Save. And now you can see my printer bed right there. You can control it from here if you'd like to. We'll just home in everything. Now I'll need to adjust my camera a little bit. Actually, my printer bed comes out about here and starts printing, so it should be fine. If not, you can always adjust it later on. G-Code Viewer. While you're printing, you can see it draw out your G-Code. Terminal. Now, if you ever want to run a PID auto-tune, you can do that directly from here. And time-lapse. So you can turn time-lapse mode on, and when you start a print, it will automatically start a time-lapse video for us. We can set the FPS, time-lapse post-roll, interval every 10 seconds. This is a pretty cool feature if you have a camera set up. And this will work with USB cameras. So that's it for this video right now. I'll make another video 
later on down the road to show you guys how to slice directly from within Octoprint. Now this has a Cura slicer built in, but you'll need to set up your profile values and everything like that. There are tons of settings in here, so if you want to experiment with it, go right ahead. If you mess anything up on the SD card, you can always reflash it. Now that you've set it up once, you should have no trouble doing it again. And it's, it'll be a pretty quick process the next time you want to set this up for yourself or a friend. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe because I got a lot more coming. And like always, thanks for watching, guys.